And here we are again with the Tradermo Show, today with Rudolf Medvedevs, financial analyst at Exante, and Sebastian. Welcome, Rudolf. Hi, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here again. And um, yeah, Exante has a big emphasis also on cryptocurrencies. I mean, you can trade a lot of things at Exante, but cryptocurrencies, that's where you've made your name and a name for yourselves lately with the XAI fund, which I have open here. So uh, basically different cryptocurrency funds, rebalance portfolio, uh, altcoins, and huge capitalization. I mean, uh, that's 12 billion. 12 billion of, uh, I think it's around yeah. 15 billion already. 15 because billion already. Okay. Yes, because of the lo last two, three day yeah. run up. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Okay, cool. Uh, let's take a look at what has been going on in the cryptocurrency markets lately. So um, here I'm opening the Exante ATP platform, and I'm starting with Bitcoin. So, yeah, your analysis the last time that we spoke has been really precise. You, We were talking, I think we were talking at the $3,600 level and then you said that this is not the bottom yet and we saw really a drop down to 3000 where it stopped and has been yeah, in a zigzag uh, since then and now it's attempting to break uh, to the top again. How, how do you see the chances of it rallying back up? Well, actually, it wasn't quite even in a zigzag. When mm -hmm. the rally started from 3,000, it went almost to 4,100 yeah. again. Yeah, that was afterwards. powerful. Yeah. Yes, afterwards, it became some kind of consolidation and some yeah. bear trends, profit fixation. And now we see it's going up again. For the moment, I think, well, for, for today at least, it reached its top. It doesn't want to go further. We saw quite a good correction from three, a three-day rise up today in mm -hmm. the morning. So right now it's uh, around there for the moment. I think it'll consolidate back at the level of 4,000 most likely, and then maybe it'll start going up if we have positive news. Mm -hmm. And if negative, if no news as well, it might happen, it'll run up. If negative news, I think we can see another downward shift again. Mm -hmm. Actually, this uh, run-up, which most likely was called an automated rally, was because a lot of Chinese investors were fixing their profits and losses mm -hmm. on the Chinese exchanges, which they couldn't move. And the people who could run away to CoinCheck and the rest of the exchanges were successful. The people who couldn't, they're fixing up their profits and going away because mm -hmm. in two days, a lot of Chinese exchanges are going to be closed. Yeah. Okay, so you see it largely as a Chinese volume move. Um these, well, these it's movements. not only Chinese, but the Chinese was the main catalyzator mm -hmm. which moved the market upward, downward right now, and the rest of the people just followed. Because mm -hmm. when you see a sharp move up, it's the automated rally, and when you see the rest of it, which is like a, sta like a stairway, it's already a relief rally, mm -hmm. which actually changes the whole thing. Relief rallies are usually quite noticeable, and you can understand that it's a trend going to an end. And an automated rally, which is like a huge spike up, is usually just understood that it's just the beginning. Right now we saw a stairway, so mo so right mm -hmm. now we're in a consolidation. So I would say we might there's a higher probability of us going to 4,000 again, and see what's going on there. Okay, so just just for some of the people who are more beginner traders. Um, what do you mean with stairways? Is this move here, like where we, like the last week, basically, where we just have these smaller candles that slowly move the way up? And you can actually, you, if you yeah, open mm. an H1 chart, you mm -hmm. can, you can, uh, and scroll to, for instance, the 25th of September, you can see there's a big green spike. Okay, That's right. an yeah. automated rally, and then it's like consolidation, mm -hmm. but it still stands on the sa same point. Yeah, and. Uh, afterwards you can see a huge spike up again yeah that's and here at from 3950 on the 27th um, yes yeah. yesterday exactly mm -hmm. and then it's it looks like a stairway doesn't yeah. it yeah and that's an automated rally meaning it's a relief rally sorry which means that people are jumping in on a train which they think they they lost already mm -hmm. so they're trying to gain back momentum and okay. now we see and Always after those relief rallies, we see only a slight correction. But today we saw a high drop mm -hmm. from like a rising wedge. So this most yeah. likely, is for the moment, at the, the top. At least I think it is. Yeah. 
So we have the rising wedge and then here the drop, which yeah is probably some profit taking off those people that got in earlier here. And so that's yeah. then why there won't be anybody jumping on the back of that train because there's no train anymore. Well, the majority of people, yeah. there's in the financial markets, you always have to dump on someone. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> someone always buys at the top. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's That's good wisdom right there. Uh, let's take a look at how this goes in Ether. We've spoken briefly before the show, and uh, one of my questions to you was um, if you don't think that there will be some kind of um, yeah, um, breakdown of the correlation between cryptocurrencies and that this will, for example, materialize here in a breakdown of the correlation between Bitcoin and Ether as the two systems kind of diverge. Um, yeah, let's take a look at the Ether chart and tell me your thoughts about this point. Well, unfortunately, you can see that basically 90% of uh, Ether chart is correlated to Bitcoin and it's uh, completely basically the same. It yeah. has, uh, although it has basically jet lag, as we can call it, that, for instance, yesterday Bitcoin rose, but Bitcoin rose as well two days ago and three days ago. Mm -hmm. Ether rose only yesterday. That yeah. was the only one. It broke its figure, which was a uh, falling triangle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the on the 300 there was a huge triangle, which was uh, basically like this, and it went like this. Mm -hmm. And now it's getting back to that triangle again. But uh, if we see Bitcoin going down yet again after its consolidation to today, which is happening, then Ether will follow as well. It's too yeah. long yet to wait for it to break away from Bitcoin. They're still the same pack. So you would wait for a huge break in Bitcoin and then to write that on Ether shortly thereafter? Yes, you can arbitrage that. If, mm -hmm. if you're lucky, you can arbitrage that. If Ether will follow without any... And if there's negative news in if Bitcoin... There's no, if there's no Chinese news, basically, then yeah. if on, on Ether, then it will follow. Yes. Chinese yeah. news it really influence uh, the chart of NEO. That's another cryptocurrency, which mm. is basically like Ether only it works as a smart contract for the Chinese ICOs. Mm -hmm. You, I think you, we heard that yeah. in October they're going to unban it. So it already is in the market. NEO is again, again $30 up mm -hmm. and costing like sky high. So, so NEO is now the replacement for Ether in China for ICOs. Yes, it always mm -hmm. has been. It, it always, always has, has been. been. Mm -hmm. Yes, because ICOs are quite illegal. Only the Chinese who could manage to take out the contract, exactly the cryptocurrency mm -hmm. out of the state could use it. But now we have NEO, which combines a good variation of blockchain technology, smart contract, and uh, our, fav our favorite Chinese regulator. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah interesting. I, I, I think that most people probably haven't heard about NEO before. Um, who are who are just investing in Bitcoin or or Ether, but um, like what's what's the market cap of Neo? Wait, I have to check it out because mm -hmm. I don't really judge be besides of market cap. Market cap is just mm -hmm. a reflection of price in terms of quantity. Uh, the but market it's also cap a right reflection now, of popularity. I mean, if if people don't know about something, then it, it's hard for it to get a big market cap. I actually look at market volume mm. more likely for it to understand yeah. popularity because we can see that Bitcoin Cash in terms of market capitalization is number four with mm -hmm. seven, 7 billion right now, 7.3 yeah. billion. But in terms of volume, Bitcoin Cash is number four. So that's... Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. Oh, no, not number one, yeah. two, three, four, five, six. six so yeah. that's two down. Yeah. And it's less uh, popular basically according to volume than it is according to market cap. Of course. So it means mm. that, for instance, speculation on uh, Bitcoin Cash is mu much less probable and interesting and uh, reliable in terms of technical analysis, maybe yeah. of sentiment analysis, rather than on Ether, Bitcoin, Zcash. And uh, NEO is at one, 1.4 billion market mm -hmm. cap for the moment. So that's already quite a lot. Yeah. It's yeah, one billion. I see one billion always as the, the an important figure to cross both for medium-sized companies and yeah, also for, yes. uh, for cryptocurrencies. Yes. It's uh, number 10 in the market capitalization mm -hmm. list. And okay, in terms of volume, is it's even better. That's what mm -hmm. I like. It's one, two, one, two, three, four, Is five, it already six, tradable at Hexandria? Uh, not yet. We're, it, it's hard to combine Chinese regulation with cryptocurrencies, mm -hmm. additionally with our regulated Maltese uh, license, but we're working on it. We okay. already have nine. We added Dash yeah. like a few days ago, so Dash is possible to trade on Exante as well. Mm -hmm. Great.
Great. Let's uh, take a look at the next one here, um, Litecoin. Or maybe uh, just before we, uh, we wrap up here, so at, at Ether, um, where do you see the medium term outlook? What's your, what's your forecast? Well, I see it as a lot of regulation is coming in, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, new regulation which makes the market more rational go in. I think Ether ICOs will be gathering much more. Uh, or um, we we just had a technical distortion. Uh, can you repeat what you said? After there will be much more regulation? Yeah, after because there is a lot of regulation going into the market mm -hmm. for ICOs. Yeah, uh, I think large cap companies will start using Ether in terms of ICOs mm -hmm. and it will become much more rational. And Ether will bump up in price yeah. up until a certain moment when uh, people would understand that they're paying for gas. Mm -hmm. too much because yeah. let's not forget that ether was made as a gas currency it wasn't made as a payment system yeah. and you have to buy a car and fill it up with petrol and the car should not cost less than the petrol yeah yeah at yeah, least I in the world <laughs> no no it, it it makes absolute sense it's uh, something that i've always wondered myself as to yeah you know, why basically ether should go up in value to the same degree as the ICOs, um, because yeah, ultimately it's just a. Uh, it's, it's not like TCP/IP as a protocol on the internet has rallied the same way that Facebook and Google have. Yes, yeah. indeed, yeah. indeed. Market capitalization in terms of a company which goes on an IPO on the stock market is completely different from a market capitalization in terms of a cryptocurrency. That's yeah. that you cannot draw parallel lines and think it will work out that well. Yeah. No, but what I mean is um, TCP/IP is like the the protocol of the internet, and Ether is kind of the protocol of an ICO. And, ah, yes. Uh, and and basically, there's no pricing for TCP/IP other than your internet provider costs. You know, it's it's just infrastructure. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. But yeah, I guess uh, the people that buy right now disagree. Um, so let's well, see how this turns out. I think the market is still irrational enough to, mm -hmm. to bump the price even higher than the, the previous all-time high mm -hmm. up until even December, maybe May. So the, it's worth yeah. buying right now. But in terms of speculation, I would invest my money in Bitcoin much better and work with speculation to beat the Bitcoin performance index. Mm -hmm. that, that, that would be my choice. Okay. So you would rather go for Bitcoin than, than Ether? I am. Yes, yeah. I am at the moment as well. Mm -hmm. I even suggest my clients who I help manage their portfolios the same thing. Okay. What about Litecoin? Um, do you see Litecoin as kind of the, the specialized Ether in the Bitcoin world and so it should, it should rise? Um, but we, we've seen basically a, almost a f yeah, it's a 40% drop since the, since the high. All time high, of course. Yeah. yeah, it almost got to 100. What what was it? The, what was the maximum actually? 85, 85 dollars. But depends on the market as well. Yeah. Well, the thing with Litecoin is that imagine Bitcoin, which is un completely unregulated. Uh, mm -hmm. It no one takes care of it. It's like a child who has no limits and it, he can go anywhere, any <laughs> any way he likes. And of course, that's why Litecoin costs. How much it costs right now? Fifty-four dollars compared yeah. to Bitcoin, which costs to to four twenty basically, yeah. because Bitcoin has no limitations and Bitcoin has no owner and ownership rights. It generates itself. It's much more popular than Litecoin. Litecoin with uh, Charles Lee, mm. it's his own baby, which he takes care of. He looks after it. Nothing will happen ever to Litecoin unless Charles Lee agrees with it. Yeah. And whatever he says, that's why Litecoin has limitations in terms of. It's maybe more rational, mm -hmm. and the price of Litecoin might be more rational than Bitcoin. Although mm -hmm. Bitcoin is promised to be 100,000 in the next five to ten years, who knows? Yeah. Uh, but Litecoin is a good payment system, which is being taken care of and being integrated really well with major companies, unlike, mm -hmm. unlike, yeah. unlike our favorite Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, uh, understood. That's more likely to be the PayPal of Bitcoin than. Uh, many other ones. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, exactly. Okay, then um, let's take a look at the XAI, so the Exante altcoin fund, basically. Um, 
what what is your forecast here will it uh, and uh, and how can i understand the most recent performance has it outperformed the bitcoin for example yes let's have a look actually if you have your platform open mm -hmm. um, i have it on the daily chart at the moment of the xai.exante yes then we can easily open xai chart let me open it as well mm -hmm. on my my side i'll open the day chart mm -hmm. when we were talking we were talking let's take the point from 3000 and up yeah how much did bitcoin do since then what was the percentage just as a comparison so bitcoin has basically gone well if you really take the 3000 and then yeah yeah i mean it's gone up 33 percent or a little bit more 35 36 percent okay now let's take our favorite xi index which we was at the bottom of the bottom was 385 mm -hmm. and we take Fibonacci placement. Where was it? Okay, yeah, here kind we go. Of from 400 to yeah, like 575. So 53%. Yeah. Yes. There okay, we go. Okay, so outperformance right there. Yes, outperformance right there. Exactly. It's from the most bottom up to the most top. Mhm. Mm it's really interesting. I mean, when I when I see this, I'm I'd be tempted to invest here. Um, it's it's nice that that it's actively managed the only thing that i'm uh, concerned about is you also have e ether classic in there or not um, yes we i think yeah. we do have ether classic but remember that we look at how much the percent the high percentage shows yeah. and how much the high percentage is mm -hmm. and if Ether classic is not performing then most likely we have it around one to two percent yeah. just to have a thick mm -hmm. mark yeah so we just have ethereum classic over okay, there okay okay but of yeah, course, I have a deep aversion against Bitcoin Cash and Ether Classic. I just think like when something is outdated technologically, then um, I don't want to invest my money in it. Well, the thing is, this is the funny part. Bitcoin Cash, uh, Ethereum Classic, yes, it's an outdated old contract which has its flaw. Just w it was yeah. fixed, but the con but the whole scheme was not remade. Yeah. But Bitcoin Cash is under undervalued right now because Bitcoin mm -hmm. Cash has its uh, RAM, not RAM value, but uh, ability to transfer uh, money in terms of eight megabytes mm -hmm. per block while bitcoin is one megabyte per or two megabytes per block i'm sorry in august, we yeah. changed that in august so we compare eight to two we compare eight legs to two legs yeah so bitcoin class bitcoin bitcoin classic bitcoin cash is slightly undervalued at some point because in terms of technology sending payments etc mm -hmm. it wins it wins a great deal but Everyone sticks to the, to the decentralized thing. No one likes decentralized Chinese made because the Chinese actually were the people who decided to make Bitcoin, Bitcoin cash. Mm -hmm. Okay. To fork it. Interesting, yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, the Chinese miners, um, or do you mean yes. that they're in the end yeah. controlled by the government? Yeah, the Chinese miners actually, the whole story of Bitcoin Cash was that everyone was really happy about everything. They agreed for Bitcoin to switch to 8 megabytes. Mm -hmm. And then there were, was another unit, which was the Chinese miners, who said that, no, we don't agree. We want a different Bitcoin contract for us to have 8 megabytes. And uh, because they had mar a market capitalization of uh, Jihan Vu, I think his name mm -hmm. was, he has he has uh, market capitalization of 16 to 20% of the whole world miners. Mm -hmm. He said like, nope, we're making it our own contract. And that's it. That's how basically one person divided Bitcoin in two. And it's possible to have only 20% of market capitalization and divide it, not ignoring developers, ignoring everyone else, speculators, just looking at the miners. And that's how Bitcoin Cash was born. But of course, he made huge money out of it because he received both Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin and yeah. it, it was all about money in the end. Hmm. Yeah, understood. Yes, just for, for those that are completely new to this and haven't heard about how a fork works in the Bitcoin world or in the cryptocurrency world. Basically, uh, when, when a fork happens, the people that received <coughs> the previous cryptocurrency also receive the same amount in the new one and can then uh, basically sell one of them and still have all of the other one theoretically the value of the one that um yeah uh 
theoretically the combined value shouldn't rise in the moment of the fork, but the crypto markets still behave kind of irrationally when these things happen. And so people actually make money in those moments when yes. in the if it was the stock market and as efficient as the stock market, uh, there would be no money to be made in these situations. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But you have to understand that at some point, someone sold at uh, $100 and someone bought at nine hundred dollars there was there yeah. was this one person or a group of people who yeah. got dumped and who's who are still holding the bag with yeah. <laughs> huge positions. of course yeah well that's really really interesting um we just wanted in the at the end of this in of this uh live show with you here take a look also at the gold price in comparison because a lot of people are seeing at least bitcoin as kind of like the digital gold and so um what does conservative gold do and how and and what's going on here for because when when bitcoin was going down i was wondering if some people might switch back to gold and maybe this is partly what drove also this high that we saw here at the height of the korean at the north korean crisis at almost 1360 and since then crypto has rallied more and gold has dropped back to 1280 yeah, yes, um, gold is lacking popularity lately because it lost a lot of trust, in my opinion. It's still a lot of gold bugs actually consider gold to be number one, one commodity in the world. Mm -hmm. I wish them luck, but I think unless we have a major crisis, which would be economical dis an economical disaster, gold will have to share its pedestal with Bitcoin now because mm -hmm. Bitcoin does not depend on economical negative influences that much. It only depends on one news and one news only. Something happening with Bitcoin supply and demand, it drops in price. Everything goes well with Bitcoin supply and demand, it goes in price up. Economical crises, no one, no one looks at it in terms of Bitcoin. It doesn't matter because it, it, it exists in the air basically yeah. so so you mean in, if we saw a real economic crisis people would turn back to gold and ditch their bitcoin no 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 the co quite the yeah. contrary the other way around you, you think people would yeah. yes buy a lot of bitcoin actually mm -hmm. and gold might underperform in such a such an event and and that is because you think that in a real crisis people could still trade with each other with bitcoin but who would actually want a gold bar in that situation the thing is, is that what uh, you're saying if or, or actually, what's what's your rationale behind it? My rationale is that uh, let's not forget that if I buy an electrical gold contract or the GC on mm. the futures exchange, I will not get physical gold. Yeah. There is so so much little physical gold in the world left, rather than how much it is traded. So when you have much more, it's like printing money. Yeah. When you have something printed and just as a tick mark. And if everyone who ha owns gold on paper goes to, a ba to banks and starts asking for gold, we'll see a huge problem with the reserves. So yeah. in this case, and a lot of people start to acknowledge it since already 2012, 13, right now, just mm -hmm. no one had a substitute for it. Now Bitcoin came in mind, Bitcoin became much more popular rather than some sketchy dark web thing to buy drugs yeah. and guns. And uh, we have here this example when even North Korea starts to threaten the world and gold is already starting from 2016, 17 beginning is only underperforming. It was at 200 to 20 right now. It's mm -hmm. on 217. Yeah, basically here beginning of 2017, we started at kind of 1100. And so, yeah, we're, we're 10, 20 percent up with gold. Um, but yeah, nothing in comparison to crypto, of course. Yeah, yeah, silver is the same story. It is range, but maybe at some point you, you should actually switch to, to, to trading on uh, technical analysis and sentiment analysis back to commodities and metals rather than on Bitcoin, because Bitcoin will be over, over flooded with the uh, speculators, <laughs> market yeah. makers, if, if everything goes that, that much. So we are gonna, soon at, we're going to start which, making at which, levels, <laughs> at which levels do you expect that we will say, Oof, I'm not touching this cryptocurrency here anymore. Like, when when would you stop buying Bitcoin, you yourself, or with the with the fund? 
the well personally i have no idea regarding the fund we do mm -hmm. not disclose our inside strategy mm -hmm. of when where, what where because it was a suggestion i can yeah. only tell you my personal point of view mm -hmm. i can say i can easily buy bitcoin at 10000 if i know that the, the technicals are right and the yeah. trend is still going up and i can easily se sell it short at 3000 2000 mm -hmm. 1000 if i see that the trend is continuing to a bearish diversion yeah. so i don't really care about when I, I'm looking at the chart, mm -hmm. I'm only looking at the round numbers. Yeah. The rest, the first two, like four two, one two, three two, in terms of three yeah. thousand, thousand, I ignore them. I only look at the round numbers and I only look at the technical parameters. And uh, I'm not biased towards the price. I think if there's supply and there's hype in the market, which there's gaining momentum again after China, mm -hmm. then uh, we'll always have someone who wants to buy it at ten grand. Okay. And so you, your advice to all traders out there is basically to focus on technical analysis when it comes to cryptocurrencies and then to watch the big news out of China. No, not quite. I cannot suggest any traders to actually... Every, every trader finds his own way of how to trade. Mm. My way is comfortable for me. Someone else might think yeah. it's completely irrational and I'm a complete fraud. <laughs> <laughs> we can say yeah, like I mean, that's, that's ultimately part of the market and that's also why we have Tradimo and all of the courses where people can find their own philosophy through education. Yes. Um, exactly. But so okay. my, my suggestion yeah. would be just not to focus on what the big media is saying, focus on to whom the big media is selling. Okay, yeah. That's the thing. You, ha you have to always know who, who you're dumping on. Then you're winning. <laughs> okay, so the next time that JP Morgan comes out and says sell Bitcoin, you just wait for the bottom and you buy because you know they want to buy. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna look at the whole theater because I, I love myself a splendid theater. And <laughs> I, I try to not go into news which are black black horses and black swans. I mm. hate them. Okay. They they ruined all the technical anal analysis yeah. and everything. But G P Morgan did the best way how to prove that what they are and what they have been since since the 19th <laughs> 20th century. Okay. Yeah, great. Thank you very much, Rudolf. I think this, this has been really entertaining and also educating. Wish you well. Wish you well. We'll, we'll see each other again, I'm sure. I hope soon. Thank you very much, Rudolf. Have a good one. Cheers. Bye. Bye.